The Physical Ability and Stamina Test, or PAST, is designed to test the member's endurance for a minimum fitness level for entry into the pararescue, combat control, special operations weather, tactical air control party, and SEER battlefield airmen AFSCs. Applicants must successfully complete the pass given by a qualified test administrator. The pass must be conducted within a three hour time frame. The test is comprised of six events. They must be accomplished in the proper order and the member must pass every event. Failure of any event will result in the overall failure of the past. This video provides the general requirements for administering the past. Note that there are differences in past requirements for each battlefield airman AFSC. The program guidance message will identify these specific requirements and current past criteria for the AFSC for which the applicant is testing. Underwater swim. The applicant wears swim trunks and masks to swim underwater in the pool. Applicants are required to accomplish two underwater swims for a specified distance without breaking the surface. Again, reference the PGM of the desired battlefield airman job specialty. The interval begins with the applicant standing at the shallow end of the pool with his back against the pool wall. He faces the deep end of the pool. The applicant crouches down until the buttocks rest on the heels. Simultaneously, the applicant leans forward and pushes off the pool wall with both feet. The applicant assumes a streamlined or hydrodynamic body position with the hands and arms outstretched. The index fingers and hands lay on top of one another. The shoulders extend over the ears with the head and eyes looking down at the bottom of the pool. Hold position and glide as far as possible. This posture will decrease effort and increase glide distance. Note that by looking at the bottom of the pool, you would decrease surface area and reduce drag. If you look up, your body position changes, that is, your chest and hips drop, thus increasing drag and becoming less efficient. Continue to glide in the streamlined body position. When you see and feel yourself slowing down, begin a keyhole stroke. Cup your hands and forearms to pull water in a circular motion. The hands move away from each other and return back together at the chest. In a thumb-to-thumb -thumb position, rotate hands, push down and slap both hands on thigh. When you slap your thigh, it is your cue to do a frog kick. Your feet and heels flex up, getting as close to your buttock as possible. Then both legs kick to the side and come back together. The palms of your hands drag across your body from your legs, to the hips, to the belly, and then back to the chest and to a streamlined body position with index finger to index finger, hand lying on top of one another with arms fully extended and shoulders over ears. The applicant will remain underwater for the required distance. Surface and freestyle swim back to the starting position. The applicant will rest standing up until the next interval begins. The second event is the surface swim. Swim trunks and swim goggles or scuba masks are the only equipment items allowed. This swim is conducted using any of the following strokes or combination thereof. Freestyle, side stroke or breast stroke, the preferred strokes being freestyle or side stroke. The swim is continuous for the required distance and or time as outlined in the PGM based on the desired battlefield airman job specialty. If an applicant stops any time during the swim, for example, hanging on the wall or allowing feet to make contact with bottom of the pool, the test will be stopped and considered a failure for the entire past. After completion of the swim, allow a 30 minute break prior to the next event. Freestyle. Visualize a line running down the center of your body from your chin to your chest. This line is the axis upon which your whole body should pivot. This line should extend horizontally in the direction you are swimming. Keep your legs straight, but not rigid, with your toes pointed out. Kick up and down. Continue kicking the entire time. Move your arms in a windmill motion opposite each other. While one arm is extended completely out, the other should be all the way back, almost against the side of your body. Keep your hands flat, thumbs separated from the index finger, 
and pull the extended arm through the water beneath your body. Bend your arm at the elbow and draw your fingertips along the imaginary line down the center of your body. Lift your other arm out of the water and move it all the way forward as the first arm is pulling beneath you. Bend at the elbow and drag your fingertips along the surface of the water. Penetrate the water with your fingertips and completely extend the arm. Breathe on one side by turning your head to that side as the arm comes out of the water. Stretch each stroke out as much as possible without pausing from the windmill motion. Remain horizontal in the water. A strong kick will keep your legs from sinking behind you. As you pull your hands through the water, keep them cupped firmly but not rigidly. Fingers should be held just slightly apart. Your kick should not make a big splash, but rather should just churn the surface of the water. Side Stroke Lie in the water on whichever side feels more comfortable. The lower side of your head is in the water. Your legs are close together and extended. Your toes are pointed. Hold your feet together and draw your heels up toward your seat as far as comfortable. With your knees bent, move your top leg forward and your bottom leg backward so your lower legs resemble scissors opening up. Snap your legs together in a scissor kick. When your legs meet, they should be extended as in the starting position. Extend your bottom arm ahead of you with the palm down beneath the surface of the water. Your top arm lies alongside your top leg. From its extended position, sweep your bottom arm from its extended position down through the water. When it's pointed nearly straight down, bend your elbow and sweep your hand up to your chest. Slide your top hand sideways through the water from your thigh to your chest. The force of your stroke is transferred from your bottom hand to your top hand. Sweep your top arm back down to the starting position as you push water down towards your feet. Extend your bottom arm forward again. Synchronize the timing of your arms and legs so you're snapping your legs together at the same time your arms meet at your chest. Glide for three or four seconds at the end of each stroke. Breaststroke. Keep your legs close together and pull them up toward your chest. At the same time, hold your palms together and up against your chest, as if in prayer. Kick out and apart with your legs, and then quickly squeeze them together. Try to imitate the way a frog kicks. After the kick, streamline your body by pointing your toes and extending your arms completely. Glide for a few moments with your arms fully extended. Then turn your palms outward and pull with both hands out and around in a circular motion so that they end up in the original position, together against your chest. To take a breath, use the thrust of the pull with your hands to pull your head up and out of the water. As your head goes back down, your arms should just begin to plunge forward with the next kick. Glide for two or three seconds and then repeat the entire motion. The glide is the most important aspect of this stroke. After the big kick, streamline your entire body as much as possible. Your shoulders should be almost against your ears. Glide and then pull your head up and forward with your stroke. The third event is the run. Physical training attire and good running shoes are the only required items. The test should be conducted on a measured running track. The run must be continuous for the required distance and or time as outlined in the program guidance message for that particular battlefield airman job specialty. If an applicant stops at any time during this run, the test is stopped and considered a failure. The member will be given a 10 minute break prior to the next event. All applicants will exercise to either muscle failure or time completion, whichever occurs first. Refer to program guidance message for minimum requirements for the desired battlefield airman job specialty. Exercise form is strictly enforced during the past and in the training pipeline. Those repetitions done without proper form will not be counted and be to the applicant's disadvantage. Tactical air control party candidates are allowed one minute to complete maximum repetitions for push-ups and crunches and two minutes to complete pull-ups. The fourth event is the pull-up. This exercise is designed to measure strength and endurance in the back, shoulder, and triceps, biceps muscles. These muscles are used during specific mission tasks such as parachute control and climbing. Applicants perform pull-ups wearing PT gear. This exercise is executed on a pull-up bar. 
The individual grabs the bar with palms away from the face, shoulder width apart. The exercise begins in the dead hung position. This is a two count exercise. On count one, pull the body directly upward until the chin is over the bar. On count two, lower the body until the body is again in the dead hung position. Individuals will not swing excessively or bicycle their feet as the chin is pulled over the bar. Legs are allowed to be bent, but must not be kicked or manipulated to aid in upward movement. Hands must remain in contact with the bar at all times. Repeat as many as possible in one minute. The fifth event is the sit-up. This exercise is designed to measure strength and endurance in abdominal and hip flexor muscle groups. These muscle groups are used during specific mission tasks such as swimming, lifting, load-bearing, and hand-to-hand -hand combat tasks. Applicants perform sit-ups wearing PT gear. The individual starts with the back flat on the ground. The fingers are interlocked behind the head with the head on the ground and the knees bent at approximately 90 degrees. Another individual will hold the feet during the exercise. If the applicant prefers, they are allowed to use a fixed object to hold their feet down. This is a two count exercise. On count one, sit up until the back is vertical to the ground. That is, the base of the neck is above the base of the spine, where the shoulders and hips form a line perpendicular to the ground. On count two, return to the starting position. If an individual raises his buttocks from the ground or his fingers are not interlocked behind the head during a repetition, the repetition does not count. Repeat as many times as possible in two minutes. Please note that Tactical Air Control Party performs standard Air Force crunches. Reference the program guidance message for Air Force crunch technique and most current past criteria. The sixth event is the push-up. This exercise is designed to measure the strength and endurance of the chest and triceps muscles. These muscle groups are required to perform swimming, lifting, climbing, load-bearing, and hand-to-hand -hand combat tasks. Applicants perform push-ups wearing PT gear. This exercise starts from the front leaning rest position. The body must be maintained straight from head to heels with knees together. This is a two count exercise. On count one, flex the elbows while lowering the body until the elbows form a 90 degree angle. On count two, raise the body until the elbows are straight and locked. Repeat this exercise as many times as possible. Any repetition that the elbows do not go to full arm extension or lockout will not be counted. The exercise will be terminated if the candidate raises his buttock in the air, does not maintain a straight body position during this exercise, lifts an arm, or touches the ground with any part of his body besides his chest. The only authorized rest position is the starting position. We have covered each element of the physical ability and stamina test. I hope this was a great review for recruiting service and informational for the prospective battlefield airmen. It is imperative for each candidate to continuously train throughout their application period and the recruiting process in order to exceed minimum standards. Start a journal to track your progress and report frequently to your special operations recruiting liaison for feedback. If you continuously challenge yourself through a regular fitness program, you'll increase your chances of success. Train hard, train smart, and never quit.